Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. I am so glad and happy to meet you through this video. And thank God for his faithfulness. In his faithfulness, he has given us one more new day to live and glorify his name. And as we begin this day, let us meditate on, uh, on, the, on the word of God. Now, this week is very special for us. It is called the Passion Week. It started yesterday, being Sunday. It was a Palm Sunday. And in our service in the morning yesterday, we have uh, considered what happened on that first day of this week. And this is the second day. And I would like to meditate these days on what happened each day. On Monday, there are two events happened in the ministry and life of Jesus Christ. And the first of these is a destructive miracle he performed, even cursing the fig tree. All of you will remember. And he was traveling from Bethany to Jerusalem, and he was hungry. And he saw a fig tree from afar. And seeing leaves on it, he thought that there would be fruit. But as he came near to the tree, he found there was no fruit. And he cursed the tree, saying, let no man eat any fruit from you from this day. Now the question is, why did he curse that innocent tree? And also the passage says it was not the season for fig tree. But nevertheless, he cursed. Why did he do it? And the next day, as the disciples were coming along with him, returning, the disciples saw that the tree was dried up from its root. And they pointed this to, his, uh, to, their, uh, to their master, Jesus Christ. And Jesus then said, if you have faith, you may speak anything. You can speak to the mountain or a tree. Move from this place and be planted elsewhere. It will happen. Now the question is, why did Jesus curse the tree? There is just one lesson. Though it was not season of the fig tree, nevertheless, the fact that that fig tree had new leaf. Now, if you know the nature of the fig tree, first the leaf comes and then the fruit. Or sometimes the fruit comes and then followed by appearing leaf. And so seeing the leaf, he naturally thought there must be fruit. So with that expectation, he approached the tree. But then he cursed, seeing there was no fruit. Why? Because this tree showed an appearance of having fruit. But the reality was, it was fruitless. So showing an appearance, but in reality, it was just the opposite. And that is the reason he cursed. Many times this can happen in our own life. How is our life? as followers of Jesus Christ. We all may have an appearance of being good disciples of Christ or good Christians, and yet in reality, what is our life compared to the teaching of Jesus Christ, what the life of a disciple should be? Do we only have an appearance? We go to church, we sing songs of praises, and we may even give our tithes and offerings, and uh, we, do, we participate in all the activities of the church. These are all outward appearance. But inwardly, how is our relationship with the Lord? Do we love the Lord, or do you love the Lord with your whole heart and soul and, and spirit and strength? That is the way we must love the Lord. God will not tolerate hypocrisy. That is the lesson. 
this tree had an appearance of a fruitfulness, but in reality, it was not so. So check your life. God is looking for truth and reality in our lives. We must be what Jesus taught us to be as followers of Jesus Christ. Completely dedicated and given ourselves and submitted ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus and doing all his commandments and doing our responsibility as the good followers of Christ, being witnesses for him that others may know Jesus Christ. So this was the first thing that happened on Monday. The second thing that happened on Monday was he went into the temple and cleansed the temple by driving out people who were making business inside the temple premises. It was not something that he could not tolerate. In the Bible, the, prophet, the prophets talk about his zeal for his father's house made him to enter in and drive out these businessmen and these men who were making uh, the house of God as a business center to gain. Now what is the problem? Jesus was so burning in his, in his heart uh, because of his zeal for the house of God. Jesus makes it very clear that God's house was meant to be a house of prayer, a place where God's people come together to meet with him, with God, in spiritual devotion, prayer, and worship. It must not be profaned by making a place or making it a means for social advancement or financial gain or uh, entertainment or showmanship. And whenever God's house is used for these purposes, God cannot tolerate. We can profane the house of God by worldly minded people. It once again becomes a den of robbers when ungodly people try to use the house of God as a means of gain and uh, uh, advancing their social uh, development and uh, uh, a, a financial a center for financial gain or anything else. It is only a house of God meant for prayer and devotion and worship and exalting the name of Jesus Christ for one's own spiritual development and growth and by drawing closer to God. Jesus does not change, my friends. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We may change, but God will never change. He will not change in his standard for our spiritual requirements. Always remember this. Jesus made it very, very clear. Twice he went into the temple and cleansed it. One in the beginning of the ministry and one towards the end of his earthly ministry. And this happened towards the end of his ministry here in this world. And he made it very, very clear what his standard is. And let us be careful in treating the house of God for what it meant to be. And thus, please God in everything and draw near to God and respect and fear the house of God because it is the place where the presence of God is. And uh, with this, I close with a prayer that none of us will come under the condemnation of Jesus Christ. Remember, the tree was dried up from its root. There's no more possibility. When God curses, 
That's what happened. So let us not be cursed. And let us be careful how we treat the house of God. Treat it in honor and glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people that your people will honor you in everything. Lord God, by our behavior, we can have an outward appearance of being your disciples or Christians by name, but in truth and reality, we are far away from you. Forgive us, O Lord, and help us by the Holy Spirit that we will genuine, be genuine people of God. And also, we as your people will honor and respect the presence of God Almighty who is holy in his house. And help us to treat your house as a place of prayer and devotion and worship and a place where we draw closer to you in relationship. Thank you. Bless your people today and let them be filled with the Holy Spirit and live for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and always be true to God.